people. I'm joined now by also Union Assembly, David McNary, who is a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, so first of all, uh, David McNary, this £63 million overcommitment, let's call it that for now, because that's what it is. Uh, the Department of Finance isn't particularly worried about it because they say, well, whenever the books are, are balanced up uh, in another month or so, everything will be OK. We've got to wait and see. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, an added contribution to the black hole. It is an overcommitment. There's a reliance here on the, on the minister um, that there will not be um, any more overspends. Any more overspends, and he's in major trouble. He's in major trouble uh, as it stands. Well, just uh, to deal with this one before we wind out, if the <coughs> £63 million pounds overcommitment remains and if there isn't an underspend in departments that helps even that out, what actually happens whenever the books are balanced at the end of the financial year? Well, he has to balance the books. I mean, it's not what actually happens. He has to balance the books. Um, is he going to... If he can't balance the books, it's that old adage, if you have a pound and you spend 99p, you're solvent. If you spend a pound and a penny, you're in trouble. We haven't got one pound here. We've got millions of pounds um, that are running away from, from the department. Now, it's not my job just to be sitting here all the time criticising Nigel Dodds. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to try and make sure that he does things right. And as far as I'm concerned, um, basically what, what we're having is... Uh, and, and let me say, I began this inquest in my own constituency, Cross Nacrevy. They were going to sell Cross Nacrevy for £200 million. They're now getting six. But in the figures that we have been given to run affairs... Um, we've dropped 194 million. Now, when I talk of a black hole, and I think you know, I've been working on it, and I have a small list here um, that I can say: 194 million cross McCreevy, 200 million he's going to need for the civil ser civil service uh, pay claim, 124 million shortfall in the rates collection, 140 uh, million shortfall in capital receipts. We've seen that with the collapse of Workplace 2010. Just to explain that again, capital receipts is sale of assets. Workplace 2010 was the potential sale and releasing of government property. Yes, yes. and that's 175 million. Um, 230 million water rates deferment. I mean, we are kidding the people out there and have been kidding them for so long. And I'm not someone who's going to say, yes, we should be paying more for, for water because as a consumer, I, don't, I've, I think I already pay for my water. But sooner or later, as the Ernie report said, it's going to come back and you're going to have to pay it. And by the time it comes in, it's going to be up to 400 million. That's a shortfall on, on, on water rates. 42 million on additional school spending. Now, that's taking me actually over the billion. And today, I'm at 64-odd million, plus the... Um, uh, the 11 million on capital uh, that hasn't been mentioned too much. So we now have you know, 60, 75 million uh, just in a matter of minutes that we're having discussed added on to this. What I want the government to do is to get the grips off it. Now this minister keeps on challenging and saying, well, you know, you need to make cuts. Where, where do you want me to take the cuts from? Do you want me to take them from health to put into, into this? I'm, I'm saying that you have all the information, Minister. It's hard for a member like me to get all the information, but I'm, I'm pretty clear that I'm being proved right daily in what I've been saying for the, for the past six months. And it's not about cuts. It's about reorganising the priorities of your budget. They have rigidly stuck to this budget for three years. Do you think, just just yeah. let me finish. We adopted the budget in far different climate than we're in now. And they have made, they have made no, um, uh, no movement whatsoever to say we're in a credit crunch and things are harder. Well, they are saying, for instance, their argument goes that freezing the rates, deferring water charges, while it has a cost, it also has a benefit. The benefit is that consumers have more money to spend. So you buy that argument. Is that the best way to beat the credit crunch? Trickle-down economics, I suppose, is what it's called. It, it may be. Um, the people who will suffer for that... Will be, the, will be, I mean, people are losing their jobs today. So there may be a minimal benefit. But are they telling me that um, by stopping uh, procurement, by not having the money in the kitty to be putting back into the construction industry and to be actually spending the money here on projects that we can do now, that they are going to have licked the unemployment figures in a couple of years' time when these will come back as a triple whammy? 
Well, you mentioned construction there. I mean, is that where the focus should be? Because the programme for government specifies high-end jobs, if you like, financial services and highly qualified types of jobs. Now, some people have begun to argue that that's, that's good in the boom times, but it's unlikely to happen. Maybe they just need to get people into employment, whether it be in construction or anything else. It's good to keep people in, in employment. Uh, when the Treasury Officials uh, Committee was over yesterday, I made the point to them that, look, we're a great nation of savers here. Um, and, and we're also very thrifty and we've also helped charities. I'm not talking to people who feel, I don't have enough money to be able to give it to the charities as I used to. But what we're, what, what, what we're curtailing here is the confidence to spend. That's why we're seeing retailing, you know, for an example, it going to be in desperate trouble. That's why we're seeing JCB skilled engineers going for jobs, and I'm not disparaging, as a bin man. So if we start losing those skills, and if we're not preparing also to come out of this recession, if we're not training people, not going to people and identifying what other jobs needed in, in two, three years' time, we're in trouble. And this government is just nothing. It's just living from day to day. But do you seem to be making a case that we can't afford the fuel poverty payment that was announced last week in total now £22 million? Pounds? Uh, uh, what I'm saying... You're, you're basically uh, saying that they're spending money yeah. hand over fist. They're not balancing their books. So well, was it prudent for the executive to say we're going to spend £22 million, pounds giving 150,000 households this one-off cash payment? Well, I think that where we've made commitments like that, then we must honour those commitments. I think that's very clear. But wh wh where this the is a fairly new commitment made in the, in the teeth of well, Christmas, uh, very clear that the banks were in crisis by then. Was it, it prudent to start making these good news announcements? Some, well, you know, there's almost a, Mad uh, a Mandelson-esque type of um, spin coming out from the, the DUP ministers on everything, in that everything is good news and they want to bury bad news and, the, uh, and they want to recycle everything. You know, what, what we did last week, we'll tell you about it next week as well. We keep on doing this. Where we have commitments and where you're going to help shoulder the burden uh, on, on people that are, that are finding you know, their own economic life difficult, I think that, that, that those things should, should be honoured. What I, what I keep on saying to them is that when we agreed to the programme for government and when we agreed to the, to the budget that would be linked to it, those circumstances have dramatically changed. We're not in those circumstances anymore. Now, at the time... I was concerned that what we were in, uh, initially uh, originating, we might have problems with it, that we might have some shortfalls. Mm -hmm. Now what we have is a colossal shortfall. Okay. David McKay, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you. And uh, indeed, that uh, final uh, stage of the budget bill has uh, been passed on an oral vote.